Hello, so for my science fair project, I did comparing the clustering patterns of bees at different temperatures, and specifically honeybees. So my introduction, the bee population has dwindled significantly over the last 10 to 20 years due to circumstances like climate change, pollution, and gentrification. Bees have had very good control of their homeostasis and know when or when not to go outside the hive. But because of changes in temperature caused by things like climate change and other influential sources, they've had to adapt and change how they survive temperature changes. This experiment was designed to analyze how they cluster together at different, te at different temperature points and how those patterns can impact their survival. So the main problem that we're looking at with this experiment is because of things like climate change, pollution, etc., that have changed the temperature, the temperature can now shift drastically from hot to cold. And to survive, bees must cluster a certain way or they could die. So how do bees survive harsh winters or drastic temperature shifts? Well, my hypothesis is if bees cluster close together when it is too cold for them to fly out, then they have a higher likelihood they will survive through the winter because they are conserving heat by sharing it with one another to survive. My equipment used is a FLIR and a iPhone. My independent variable is the temperature. Dependent variable is how the bees cluster. Constants are the time of day, weather, and location. And the controls are the iPhone and FLIR camera. So for procedure wise, I set a specific time that the bees would be checked and I did it in the afternoon when the temperature was at its peak, so around 3-ish p.m. And then I picked three days with one cold, warm, and hot. That way it varied and I wrote down the days and the dates. And then I gathered materials, which were the camera, my phone, and a notebook, and set up the camera to show where the greatest amount of heat is with the different color scales. And then I recorded in a notebook the temperature of the time that I was checking the bees. Then I walked out to the beehive and focused the camera on where the main mass of bees were. And they will most likely be in the bottom of the box. For me, most of them were at the top. And that's because we put out new food for them prior to doing the experiment. And then once the camera is focused, take multiple photos of the box, focusing on the clusters of bees and how they are packed together and then record results in notebook. And then I sent the photos to myself and I repeated steps three through seven for each day that I did the experiment. With this experiment, there is very little risk and you don't need to take that many safety precautions. Um, the thermal imaging camera takes photos from the outside of the hive and this prevents bees from freezing if we open the hive on a colder day. There will be bees that die on their own naturally, but this experiment will not progress that process or put them at a higher risk of dying. The goal is to solely take photos from the outside to prevent possible exposure to the cold and get pictures that show their clustering patterns. Safety precautions may be needed based on the temperament of the bees, like wearing a bee suit or hood, using a smoker to calm them down, etc. Luckily for us, that the day that we went to check them, there were no bees that had a temperament, so we were able to go in and go out. And on the other two colder days, none of them were flying out anyway, so there was very little risk. So day one, I did it on December 12th, and it was 66 degrees outside and windy. It was warm enough for the bees to be flying outside, so there wasn't many inside the hive. Internal temperature was about 59.3 degrees Fahrenheit, and there was no main areas of clustering, the hive has been winterized with added insulation and given feed and pollen patties to eat through the winter. Warmest areas seem to be closer to the top where the food is, and that means they're eating. So day two, that was December 20th, and it was 40 degrees outside. I said, pretty cold outside, so no bees were entering or exiting the hive. Clustering appeared to be focused at the top and upper mid-right side of the hive. They seem to be clustered somewhat tightly, not really. It's a little bit dispersed in the middle. Um, and there were no other spots where the heat spikes, but they were loose enough that they could reach down to mid-hive. The internal temperature was around 34 degrees 
Fahrenheit. So the end of the experiment, day three, that was on December 26th, it was 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It was very cold outside and there was no evidence that the bees were entering or exiting. The main areas of heat seemed to be at the same areas on the top and upper right. The first photo shows very well how they're clustering around the feed tray and pollen patties because the blue spikes that you see on the first image are actually the separations of the pollen patties. So you can see where they're clustering around it. Um, the bees are very compact and it looks like this is most likely where they're gonna stay during winter is at this top. Sometime during winter, if they end up eating through all of the stuff that was given to them at the beginning, they'll move down to the lower boxes and eat the reserves honey that they saved. And the internal temperature at that point was 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So each day had very different outcomes, and it was really interesting to study them. Day one was the most dispersed as the bees were able to fly out without freezing. Under 50 degrees Fahrenheit, they're unlikely to go outside the hive because of the possibility of freezing. Day two, they were a little bit more compact, but still somewhat loose as they stretched down farther into the hive. And day three, the bees clustered up tightly at the top of the hive and a little to the upper right. This will most likely happen throughout the winter as it gives them easy access to food and pollen, but also the sun beats down on the top of the hive and it warms up that whole area. So based on the evidence gained from this experiment, I would conclude that due to the clustering patterns taken by the bees to protect themselves against harsh temperatures, they will most likely survive the winter. I agree with my hypothesis that if the bees cluster close together when it is too cold for them to fly out, that they have a higher likelihood they will survive throughout the winter. This does not include other factors like mites, moths, or other things that attack the hive or severe, wind, or severe weather, but based solely on the reaction taken to different temperatures, I would say they have a higher chance of survival. I think it would be interesting to see how their adaptations to severe heat would be since the world is slowly getting warmer but also how it can stress out the bees and create a lack of production. Here are all my references and acknowledgements. I just want to say thank you to all of my amazing high school science teachers, Mr. Betzner, Ms. Hutto, Ms. Johnson, and Ms. Schaefer. You guys have all furthered my scientific knowledge and made it fun along the way. I really thank you. I love science and it has honestly been such a good experience to have like such amazing science teachers who pretty much always know the answers to your questions. So it's honestly been such a great experience and I'm really gonna miss that.